Okay, so we're starting with the planar 2D install. So this is the planar heater. It's going to be mounted uh, sideways like this. Um, so that's the air intake, that's the exhaust, that's the fuel intake. The wires have to be up on top, not a big deal. Um, there is a bracket that I ordered that was 80 bucks. So that's how it'll be mounted flat like that in the bottom and then that way it can be held sideways like so. The ducting, this ducting is gonna go on that side and yeah. So the first issue I've run into is uh, with the remote. Uh, so the remote um, plugs into this big clip here. Uh, so let's go outside and I'll show you the issue. So the issue that I'm having, um, we have the underfloor box open right now. Uh, but I need to have the remote on, you know, where I can grab it, not underneath. And the clip, the clip for this, that's the remote quick disconnect clip. It, it won't, even though I cut a fairly big hole and I got the rubber grommet in place to protect the wires, it won't pass through. And there is structure underneath. Let's see if I can get this to... So I don't want to drill into that structure because it supports the floor. Um, so what I've done instead, so what I've done instead is I've cut the wires and I will just splice them all and heat shrink them and I did stagger cut these because when you add the heat shrink the the connectors take up room in the conduit so stagger cut don't cut them all like flush with each other that makes life easier so first issue not a big one but all right so we have the connectors all heat shrunk and spaced out so now I just have to get the wire loom back over to protect it so this is the that's the diesel heater this is its bracket i've already drilled the holes so i'm going to use my rivet gun i have 3 16 by 3 8 stainless rivets and some 3 16 washers so i'm never going to have to remove that bracket so i figure why not just rivet it and then I don't have to worry about the bolts coming loose. So that's what we're going to do. All right, so we've got the rivet gun to the airline. We got the rivet. I'm going to use two washers, one for up top. So we're going to feed that down through the top into the hole and then I'm going to reach underneath push the other washer on that's it so before I seal the exhaust pipe onto the heater I'm going to open this and smear it around the exhaust pipe. So, tore my glove, but it should be good enough for this. And I'm just going to get a good coating. I'm going to put the exhaust pipe on and then we're going to clamp it. So This is like right under where I sleep. I am going to have a carbon monoxide detector but the sealant should help. So again, here we go. So the next step for the exhaust, I uh, bought these stainless through-hole 
I think they're marine grade. So they're gonna come out. They're gonna, I'm gonna install them that way in the rear of the underfloor box. Um, and then the other thing I have to do is I will have to cut the pipe to put the muffler in place. So, um, so I'll probably have, I don't want the muffler sticking outside, so I'm probably gonna cut the pipe Cut the pipe here so there's like a foot of it left. Put the muffler in between and then mount to the through pipe. So hopefully it's not loud. We'll find out. So, so today we're going to work on this generic plastic fuel tank. It's 5.5 liters. Um, I think that's like 1.3 gallons per Amazon. And it comes with this little guy. Um, so we're gonna have to drill a hole and I'm not gonna drill it on this side because I need to be able to reach the inside to, to tighten after we drill the hole. Uh, it's just a little piece of aluminum. Okay, so I want it low, but I want it to seat. So it needs to be in a flat spot. So I think that's what that little indent's for. Um, So I want it to be able to seal well, so we're going to put it like right about there. Oh, I punched right through it. <laughs> and drill our hole. tricky bit some long needle nose pliers we'll add the seal on the inside like so gasket and let's there we go it's threaded on so it's just a matter of tightening that up but and we have it snugged up. But you will need, I think you'll need some long needle nose pliers for that job. Okay, so nice warm day. We're gonna be up to 50. Um, so I just have spare parts over here. We have the heater mounted um, today. We're going to, we have the, the diesel tank with its fuel line. I'm going to reuse the, the battery uh, holder to keep the tank in place. And we need to drill a hole uh, through the bottom of this and then through the side of this so that I can feed the fuel line down to the heater. So that's what we're going to do. Got the conduit. We're gonna put the cover on. Fuel line coupled, strap in place. Okay, I think we're ready to test run the diesel heater. Before I do, um, I do have my fire extinguisher ready. <laughs> Better be prepared. Um, so yeah, diesel heater, there's the air intake, fuel pump, the exhaust going over to the passenger side. I bought stainless steel through hull 
ports like for boats. So that's the air intake on the driver and the exhaust on the passenger. I read the manual, they're far enough away. I shortened the power line. Um, that's fused. Oh, and I need to, good thing I was checking, I need to put a band. So what you'll see is a lot of these, I used a wire clip and riveted it. And I almost forgot with this one. I want to rivet it so that there's no way it can Bouncing around, it'll end up touching the exhaust. So I'll take care of that before we start up. We have the fuel tank. So yeah, uh, let me rivet a wire clip so that doesn't catch on fire or melt. It would probably just melt. Uh, but let's take care of that and then we'll do our test fire. All right, I figure I might as well take advantage of the photo opportunity. So, first thing we do, you get a wire clip. I'm just using these plastic ones. That's a half inch one. And we secure it around the line. Let me move you closer. So, and then from here, I'm just going to see, yeah, I think right there will be good. I'll drill the hole. Move the wire or anything. These are really easy to drill out. Not a pain at all. It's more of a pain to install it. So give it a hard shove so it's down there and just squeeze. It won't eat, it's very easy to do. And that's it. So that's secure. Okay, here we go. First, first run of the diesel heater. Wish me luck. Worst case is I push the trailer by hand up the driveway away from the house. But I don't think it'll be that bad. So here we go. Heat on. That's a good sign. It's the pump running. I'll come back when something happens. The pump is running now. I'm not seeing a draw fuel yet. Hopefully that doesn't mean a leak, but that thumping is the pump. It's moving fuel. It's taking a while. I had to run it one more time. It stopped, but the fuel is almost, see the fuel is like right there. Let's see if we're getting any heat yet. Not yet. All right, it paused for a bit. Now it's starting up again. It's smelling. Hopefully that's a good sign. I'm feeling heat. Sounds like a jet engine taking off. Uh, it's warm, very good. That's the insulation sleeve they send it with. It's very, very hot. But I can keep my hand on it. Well, we did the test fire yesterday of the diesel heater. And one of the things I was thinking about and talking about with my friend Jeff, um, just trying to make sure everything is as safe as it can be. So the, the air for the combustion comes from this pipe. So it comes out here. And then the exhaust goes all the way over here, out this exhaust pipe. If there's any leaks in these joints, even though I use the Permaflex, the muffler stuff, or Permatex, I mean. Uh, so even though I use that, um, we don't want air that's being recirculated, the hot air. It's drawing in here, going 
getting heated up through the manifold and coming out here, out through this and up through there. So that's where the hot air is coming from. So we actually want the air, we want a pipe on this end as well. Um, and I'm gonna put probably the fitting here. So we'll have, it's gonna draw air from here, go through the, main, the heat exchanger, get heated up, come out through here. Um, mm -hmm. We don't want it drawing the air from down here. And what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna fit this T on um, for, just gonna fit the T on because it's kind of a sharp bend, but on the end cap, I've already drilled a hole. And what I'm gonna do is drill a hole through the outside here and use some uh, PVC so that I'm drawing a little bit of fresh air from the outside and we'll put like some insect mesh on that so I don't want bugs getting in. Um, but that way it's drawing in some fresh air, recirculating the air, recirculating the air only from up here, not down under the box. And that should work pretty well. So I got this little guy from the plumbing section and that's gonna fit through the hole. So I like to do a little 120, rough up the end a little bit. And we're using, this is just the gray conduit schedule 40. Um, I'm gonna use another little scrap, rough up the inside of this a little bit. And then we use our cleaner, shake the excess off. And we'll have to wait. I like to let it evaporate. Okay, it's evaporated off. Now I'm gonna just take the stuff, go around, and we're gonna shove. It also lets me know what end I cleaned up. And we're just gonna fit that in place. And now that won't come loose. I'm also gonna use, um, I have some caulking to do, so I'll seal the end of that with some caulking. Um, so I got it mocked up, just a short piece so I can crimp it on. Um, and what we're gonna do, I know this is ugly, but I use some Cicaflex sealant, some crack sealant, it's polyurethane so it lasts longer. We're gonna stick that on the, on the end of the T, and then this end's gonna go up to a floor vent so that it's drawing air from inside the camper uh, to reheat it but it's also gonna suck air from here from the outside. So it's like gonna be a half inch pipe. This will get me to the wall of the underfloor box. There's a hole drilled through it. And then we're gonna take this piece and stick it in from the outside. And I'm gonna angle it slightly down so that water will drain out. Now the other issue I'm worried about, cause I have a half inch hole um, going through the ductwork up inside the cabin I don't want insects kind of making a camp. So I'm gonna cut, I've cut this little piece of insect screen. It's gonna go in here. And then I'm gonna push this in to keep it in place. And I'm gonna drill a hole where I'll just put like a zip tie so that this doesn't fall out. So hopefully you can see the screens in place. Zip tie the little shim. Um, so yeah. Also on this outside piece, I'm gonna put this three quarter inch wire clamp around it and rivet it against the outside of the box so that I can make sure it's angled the way that I want. Um, and that'll keep it from coming loose. So that'll give it the security that it needs. Okay, so everything's connected. We have the T. The outdoor air intake, it's connected up here through the floor vent. And then if we walk around to the side, we got it riveted in place, slightly downward angle. The only other thing I notice is that as I close this, I need to kind of smush the line back together, but I'm not gonna be opening this hardly ever, so that's not a big deal. Well, I've got the heater running on low. You can barely hear it. Let me move the microphone.
very quiet. So this is what it sounds like inside. You can hear the fuel pump a little bit. And one last thing, I did install the carbon monoxide detector and I got the one that shows you the levels. Got the bolt in place and to keep the rubber exhaust mount off the floor we'll stick another washer and then one of these bad boys another washer down on top like that lock washer and a nut. Okay, so I'm going to use some aluminum foil before I put the adhesive back soundproofing mat on because like if I ever want to disconnect this wire and stuff, I don't want adhesive all over this. So I'm just going to wrap it in some foil. Use a drill bit to find the hole for the zip tie. And now I can wrap that in soundproofing mat. Okay, so now it's wrapped in the soundproofing mat and I pushed a drill bit through the, the zip tie mount. And that gets it up off the floor. Next, we're using this, it's like a thick rubber mat foam to wrap the heat pump. But I'm gonna do it in two different pieces. No longer spiking in the mid 80s. Okay, so I just packed in more of the rubber backed acoustic foam. Sandwiched it in. So I guess it's this. So I guess it's this foam backed rubber that makes the biggest difference, even more than the kills mat. I think the kills mat, the adhesive backed stuff that they soundproof vehicles with, that's fairly good for the exhaust and air noise. Like that doesn't seem quite as loud. But I'm not hearing that dunk, dunk, dunk sound anymore. And that was layers of this, but you got to go like three or four layers. Um, that that kills the sound. 